خير الحج وحج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر العمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Indeed all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we seek His aid we, <coughs> we, we, we praise Him, we seek His aid and we seek His guidance To Him we turn in repentance Whoever Allah guides, none can misguide And whoever Allah causes to be misguided, none can guide thereafter I bear witness that, more, that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah That He is alone without partner to be made with Him And that I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Is Allah's final prophet and messenger all you who believe, fear Allah as you should be feared, and do not die except but as Muslims. O mankind, be dutiful to your Lord, the one who created from a single person, Prophet Adam, السلام, and from him his wife, and from them spread many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights, and don't cut the family ties. Surely Allah is ever watch over what you do. O you who believe, fear Allah as you should be feared, and keep your deeds to him. And always speak the truth. He will direct you towards righteous good deeds, and he will forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed achieved the greatest achievement in paradise. And to proceed, indeed the most truthful speech is the Book of Allah, Al Quran Al Karim. And the best guidance is the guidance of Prophet Muhammad. And the worst of actions are those which are invented into the religion. And every invented matter in the religion is a misguidance. And every misguidance leads to the hellfire. <coughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam, today, I remind myself and yourselves of our duty to Allah. And especially in terms of, do we improve ourselves? Have we improved ourselves? Especially when it comes to our character, our morals, our behaviors. For many problems today in our society are caused as a result of what we say and what we do. Whether it be in relationships in the family or at work, or at school or college or university. Every aspect of our life, our relationships are damaged by our character. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told us in the hadith, مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُتْ Whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let him speak good or remain silent. And Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, he explained this hadith meaning that if a person wants to say something, then you need to check about it, that it will not harm anybody. However, if by saying those words or those statements, it will result in harm, then you are to refrain from speaking. Then you hold yourself from saying those things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the meaning of the hadith, whoever can guarantee what is between his jaws, meaning the tongue, and what is between his thighs, the private parts, I will guarantee him paradise. This is the fruit of being observant of what we say and do. In fact, from the problems that happen within ourselves, our families and friends, one of the reasons is because we speak about others. We carry gossip, whether that's malicious, harmful, whether we are insulting somebody or backbiting somebody. This is one of the reasons. When a person is two-tongued, about this, Rasulullah sallallahu said, the most evil people is a two-faced person who comes to these with one face and goes to those with another. Meaning that you go to one person and you're nice about this person, but you go to another person, yet about that person you're no longer nice, rather you come out with all the faults and harm to insult that person you've just been to. In fact, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa warned us, that who is two-faced in this world will have two tongues of fire on the day of judgment. Listen to the advice of the Prophet ﷺ when he said to Uqba bin Amr, when Uqba asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Qala, qulta, ya Rasulullah, man najah? He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what is salvation? Qala, amsika alayka lisanak. Take hold of your tongue, hold it. Wal yasa'ka baytuk. And stay in your houses. And cry over your sins. That advice to stop you backbiting, slandering, gossip mongering. All these are beneficial advice. Why? So that we don't incur sin on ourselves. We don't cause harm between ourselves, our families, our friends. Backbiting, how common sadly has this become for each and every one of us. 
When Rasulullah was asked, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about backbiting by his companions, well, what it is, ghibah, he said to them, or they, when he asked them, they replied, Allah and his messenger know best. And he told them, it's that you mention about your brother what he would hate in his absence. And when it was said to him, well, what if I say about my brother is true? Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if in him is what you say, you would have backbitten him. And if it is not in him, mean you lied. Then it is a slander, buhtan, which is a great sin, one of the major sins to lie. Allah says about backbiting in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ishtanibu kathiran min al-dhan inna ba'd al-dhan yathm wa la tajassasu wa la yagtab ba'dukum ba'da O you who believe, you believers, avoid much suspicions. Indeed, some suspicions are sins and spy not. Neither backbite one another. Then Allah says, Would you like to eat the dead flesh of your brother? You would hate it. So desist, stop this backbiting. And Allah indeed is severe. Allah, I fear Allah. And Allah is the one who is forgiving and merciful. Another thing that we find affecting many of our society and especially the youth and this is whether it's in the homes whether it's out on the streets or in the schools or at the workplace and that is a lack of respect rather it's not only for our youth and youngsters it's also for the adult, adults sometimes when Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came and he gave us the best of guidance the best of mankind when he would speak he would not speak from his own desire only by revelation when he said, "Man lam yarham zaghirana wa yarif haqqa qabirina, falaysa minna." Rasulullah sallam said that whoever is not merciful to our youngsters, kind to them, compassionate to them, he is not one of us who does not show mercy to our young ones and respect our elders. Where are we with the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Where are we with our love for the Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Do we follow him and obey his commandments, his guidance, anger? is another aspect which touches all parts of society. Our failure to keep calm, where we resort to swearing, cursing, or even physical violence. Words are said that can't be taken back. Harm that can't be undone. Abuse to each other. How many of us have been involved in this? Getting into arguments without reason. Why? For the sake of putting our point across. To win the game. To say, I won this. You didn't. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us in the hadith, whoever knowingly argues uselessly, Allah will continue to be angry with him until he refrains from it. And whoever says about a believer that which is not in him, Allah will house him in a mill of the people of fire of Jahannam, of hellfire, until he leaves on what he said. We find this breakdown in our relationships. If we look at the youth culture, young people, what is it that we show today? A loss of manners, a lack of respect. It's cool to diss people in your speech, to swear about their mothers or their fathers. Yes, this is the youth culture today, sadly, except who Allah has guided and saved. Good advice and wisdom of our elders, of the adults, is ignored. Previous ideals are abandoned. Being respectful, getting an education, finding a good halal job, maintaining a good family reputation. Where is this today? Parents need to instill this in the children. Put the importance of these things into their minds, into their hearts. So as they grow, they have an attachment to doing these things, fulfilling these ideals. Not to leave them 24 hours in the, te- in the holidays in front of a television, surfing the net, uselessly wasting time. Social media becomes their next friend. What happened to the family relationship? Going out with places, enjoying each other's company, building that relationship, building love and harmony in the family. But today, everybody's on their own, doing their own things. We don't have time 
No mother for a child, no child for a mother, no father for son, no son for father. Brothers and sisters are doing their own things. There's no cohesion, no keeping the family together today. Because we lost the value of what the family is. Today's ideals are what? Being the man or being the woman. Not following instructions or advice when it's given. Saying we're in the control, not the parents. How many times we've heard the children say, let me live my own life. When a mother or father wants to see the best for their child. Did a mother give birth to a child? To misguide the child, to have harm for that child? No. Do we know the value of our parents? Rasulullah says that once saw a man carrying both his parents on his shoulders, making tawaf around the Kaaba. And he said, have I repaid them? Have I repaid them? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, listen to what he said. You have not even repaid a single moan, a single sound that came out of your mother's lips when she was in childbirth. Like the child who sent, who put a note up for the mother or the father saying, for doing the dishes this much, this much for doing this, this much for cleaning the house, this much for doing the bedroom, so forth. Total, so many pounds or so much, whatever the cost was. So the mother replied the note for looking after you as a baby when you could not defend yourself or even feed yourself. Zero. For looking after you when you were ill and spending sleepless nights worrying about you. Zero. For all the problems in your life when you used to hurt yourself when we picked you up and looked after you. Zero. Total zero. Do we know the worth of our parents? Especially our youngsters, I ask that to you today. You would not know until one of your parents has gone and left you. If Allah took your parents today, then you will know what a parent is. No. Today, we want to do the opposite. Disrespect. Not listen. Do our own things. Because we know better. We know better. And we go against what Allah has ordered. To be dutiful to the parents. And that applies to the elders as well. And we've enjoined you to be dutiful to your parents, to listen to them, to be compassionate, to be kind, to serve them. Allah says, unless they attempt for you to make partners with them in worship, then do not obey them. If they attempt for you to worship other than Allah, then do not obey them. But as long as it's in good, ma'roof, in what is known to be of the good things, we have to obey the parents. We should have no resistance to that. Otherwise, we gain the displeasure of Allah. Let me tell you an incident that happened recently. A mother and a daughter were having a conflict. The daughter was disrespecting the mother. The mother poured her heart out to her own mother, the girl's grandchild. Through anger, the grandmother made a dua. Oh Allah, may she be, have a fever, a high fever for what she's done to my daughter. A mother made a supplication to Allah. Same within a few hours, that child had a high fever that she had to go to a hospital. There is no hijab, there is no barrier between the one who is under oppression and Allah. And beware of the supplication of the parents. If your parent makes dua against you, do you think Allah will not answer that dua? We gain the anger of Allah when we do these actions. Are we improving our character? When the Prophet ﷺ told us about our speech, when he passed by a grave and he saw two people, he said, these two people in the grave are being punished. Punishment in the grave. For what? Because one of them used to engage in slandering others. He used to say bad things about people. And sadly, this is what you find today. Many people, especially the youth, when they get involved in arguments and words and they spread rumors. How many problems in schools do you find between the students? Because of the tongue. If only that student had held the tongue, the fight would have not happened. The problem would not happen with the teachers. 
Why? Because we lost that respect. Even to the non-Muslim elders, if somebody is giving us good, we have to acknowledge that. We have to acknowledge that. So this, these problems which are recurrent continue to happen. There has to be a continuous emphasis on character and behavior of what is expected. And parents pay, play a big importance in this, a vital part. As a reminder, sitting down explaining, putting forward what the boundaries are, or children cannot cross. Making use of the correct sanctions. This is a duty for every single parent. Otherwise, society starts to break down. Problems start to arise. Our youth, our children will not know how to deal with interpersonal relationships. And Rasulullah was sent for this. When Allah said about him, in, when, sorry, in the hadith where the Prophet said, The only reason I've been sent is to perfect good manners. Allah says about the one with good manners, about us when we have taqwa, because it's linked to our fear of Allah. We respect Allah and His Messenger and the parents if we have taqwa. You want respect? Whose respect are you wanting? The guys on the corner of the street, people at work, your friends and mates at school or college? No, Allah says, the most respectful, most honorable in Allah's sight is the one who is most fearful of Allah. Are you the one fearful of Allah? Do you want that respect? Do you want to gain that respect? Then it's with taqwa, with fearing Allah, obeying Allah's commandments that you will get on in the sight of Allah. And Rasulullah was the epitome. He was the number one character for us to follow if you want to know the best behavior, and morals, and character. Allah subhanahu wa revealed an ayah in the Quran about him. And indeed, you are upon a noble character, conduct, an exemplary manner. There's no higher person to follow when it comes to character and good morals and manners than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I ask this question as we finish this first khutbah. Who do we intend to please with our poor behavior and character? Because it pleases no one except the shaitan and his friends. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ilaha ta'ala astaghfiru wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een wa ba'ad We finish on the point of taking the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the best example لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ وَسْلُطٌ حَسَنًا Indeed in the Messenger of Allah you are the most perfect example to follow Part of the other problems that arise for our behavior, our poor conduct is that we take other than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as our model, our role model, our example to follow. And we follow a way other than the believers, a way other than Islam. That we look to non-Muslims and we take the bad parts from them. Things that do not benefit us and go against Islam. And many of us sadly have started to adopt un-Islamic practices. And today being the 1st of April, I'd like to mention, this is one of those. Because April Fool's Day, as they say, is nothing except something which is based on telling lies. And we justify this as joking. So, what's wrong with April Fool's Day, people may ask. First and foremost, let's look at the history of this. April Fool's Day, as it's called in English, is because of the lies and deception people do to fool people to make somebody a victim of a joke and the first mention of April Fool goes back to 1698 in a magazine called Drek magazine where it was mentioned that a number of people were invited to come and watch the washing of black people the washing of black people as if their color will come off based on racism and this is what we celebrate. Subhanallah. 
And that happened on the 1st of April. For a thousand years, Muslims ruled Spain. When the Christians wanted to see what was the root of, the root of their power, how were they so successful? How could they maintain power and authority over that region for almost a thousand years? What did they find? That the strength of the Muslims was in their taqwa, their fear of Allah, the obeying Allah, sticking close to Islam. So what did they do? They made a strategy. They will attempt to break the spirit of Islam. How? Not the spirit of Islam itself. Weaken the Muslims. What did they do? They sent across free cigars, free cigars and wine. And who do you think were the first to succumb to this, to fall to this? The youth made the iman weak. They indulged in drinking alcohol and they enjoyed these things until they left the love of Islam. This tactic produced the result that they wanted, weakened the faith of the Muslims. And as a result, the whole of Spain, the rule of the Muslims were put to an end. And the last stronghold of the Muslims, Grenada, fell on April the 1st. And they considered this to be the trick of April. The trick of April. From that year until the present day, this day is celebrated. And Muslims are considered the fools for how they are tricked. Not just the Muslim army, the whole Muslim ummah. All of the Muslims in general are considered to be the fools. And what do we do? We imitate them blindly and take the celebrations. Who who has honor for Islam after knowing this would celebrate this day? Celebrate the humiliation of Muslims, the downfall of Muslims? Whoever imitates a people is from amongst them. Is that what you want to be? The day where we teach our children to do lies and deception? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tukullah, qoolu wa qoolu qoolan sadeeda. Oh you who believe, always speak the truth. And we lie instead, we disobey Allah. We have disregard for the words of Allah, the Quran. They say, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to joke. Yes, when the Sahaba asked him, they said, oh Messenger of Allah, you joke with us. And he sallallahu alayhi wa said, yes, but I only speak the truth. Joking is allowed when it involves the truth. It is forbidden to use joking using lies. Why? Rasulullah SAW said, Woe to the one who tells lies to make the people laugh. Woe to him. Woe to him. A warning to him. A warning to him. And what is that warning? Rasulullah SAW tells in the hadith, meaning of it, two angels came to me last night and woke me up. They said to me, let's go. So we set out and came to a man who was lying flat on his back. With, and a man standing over his head with an iron hook. And behold, he would put the hook in one side of the man's mouth and tear off that side of his face to the back of the neck. And similarly, tear his nose from the front to the back and his eye from the front to the back. And then he turned the other side of the man's face and did just the same as he did the other side. As soon as he'd done this, the man's face would return back and he did it again. And it continued this punishment. I said to my two companions, being the angels, Subhanallah, who are these two people? And they said to him, move on, move on. Then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, describe me how the angels explain the things that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has seen. They said, or he said, as for the man you came across, the sides of whose mouth, nostrils and eyes were being torn off from the back, front to the back. He is a symbol of the man, who goes out of his house in the morning and tells so many lies that it spreads and becomes widespread. This is the punishment for those who lie. Those who think there's no big deal in it. These are the words, or the meaning of the words of our beloved Prophet And lastly, the celebration of Easter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْنِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Do not cooperate with each other in sin and transgression. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ and فِيرَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ Indeed, Allah is severe in punishment. Cooperate with each other. In birr, righteousness and piety. Do not cooperate with each other in sin and transgression. We are forbidden by Islam to take part in un-Islamic festivals. In Islam we have two festivals, Al-Eidain. Eid al-Fitr wa Eid al-Adha. 
These are two Eid for us. And every Jum'ah is an Eid for us. So celebrate every Jum'ah. Do things. Have a party. Invite friends and family. This is a restriction. Allah restricted through His Prophet ﷺ. Any un-Islamic festivals forbidden for us. This is the crux of the matter. If we buy, we sell, we promote, we cooperate, we gain the sin of that. And each and every one of us will return to Allah and answer for the deeds that we did, for the actions we did, said, and the words we have spoken. In summary, first thing, many problems we face are because of our own actions, our own behavior, our own speech, the things that we do, and can be easily avoided. We watch two things, our tongues and our bodies, our arms and legs, the actions that we do with them. Secondly, we should know that a lack of respect and manners is against what the Prophet ﷺ taught and practiced and is against what Allah has commanded for the believers, for those who are Muslims and it will earn the anger of Allah upon them. And thirdly, the part of improving our character and manners is to reject any actions and celebrations that go against Islam as Islam is a complete way of life and guidance for all of mankind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us safe from the harm of disbelief. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his prayers upon his final prophet and messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the best of morals, manners and character. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, to have mercy on us, to guide us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put love in our hearts, love of Islam and hatred of disbelief. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst the guided. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah amarakum bi amri bada fihi bi nafsi wa thanna fihi bi malaikati fa qala ta'ala. Inna Allah wa malaikatu yasalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وأثمان وعلي وأنسائر الصحابة الأكرمين وعن التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين اللهم احدنا لأحسن الأخلاق فإنه لا يهدي بإحسنها إلا لأحسنها إلا أنت اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات الأهياء منهم والأموات اللهم اشمل بعفوك وغفرانك ورحمتك آباءنا وأمهاتنا وجميع الأرحامنا ومن كان له فضل علينا اللهم حبب إلى الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكرح إلى الكفر فسوق العسيان واجعلنا من الراشدين <تصفيق> سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب عليك قوموا لصلاة المستان في your prayers